it's an easy boat to look after because there's plenty of room. Um, most of the systems are fairly straightforward. And okay, there's a bit more of it, you know, because it's not small, but, but still one engine, one generator. Good spec, isn't it? Everything's really quite good easy, quality. quite straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. We've not had anything major. We had one electrical problem on the generator, mid-ocean, yes. which we just couldn't sort out. Yeah. Um, we didn't, you know, and it's one of these stupid things that when you get back, somebody says, oh, did you try X? No. <laughs> yeah. But apart from that, no, we've had no problems at all, really. We've been very lucky. She's a real home from home because we spent long time, long periods of time on her. So lots of space for hobbies and games and toys and that sort of thing. Golf clubs, musical instruments. Golf clubs, yeah. Bicycles. Golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Ridiculous, isn't it? But you see, South Carolina, you know, they've got more golf courses in Hilton Head, which is where we were, yeah, yeah. than you can shake a stick at, so we had to go and have a go. It would be rude not so, to. Exactly. While you're there. <laughs> so we did. Yeah. So we played a bit of golf. We think it's about as big as we would that we can cope with, mm. um, frankly. Mm. We wouldn't go any bigger than this. It weighs 21 and a half tonnes or something. It's a, it's, it can be a bit of a handful, especially, you know, it's like everything else. The sailing's easy, but coming in and out of marinas can be a bit challenging. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's we've, not the sort of boat where you can leap onto the pontoon and just, just put your push hands, it off. You no. know, on the guardrails and keep it off, you know, because it's got too much momentum. So, yeah, you do have to drive it. We started at 32 foot, we went to 41 foot, then 44 foot, then this one. That's and as all the children grew, bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger. That, yeah. that was part of it. Yeah. Um, you know, they always say that they have foot for every year of your age. Well, I don't actually think it gets to a point where it doesn't really work unless you've got crew. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then it's fine. We hate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think, we certainly wouldn't go bigger than this. Yeah. And if we ever sell this boat, then we'll probably go down, back down to 40. Like that. I wouldn't like to go much below 42, I don't think, for passage making. No. Because the bigger the boat, obviously, the more comfortable the passage making is. And the faster times, I suppose, as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah we do four hours on, four hours off. Everybody does a different pattern. Mm. The only time we tend to shorten it is if the weather's really bad. do not happen very often, yeah. but when it's really bad, four hours is just a bit too much. So we'll drop down to three. Sometimes two. Sometimes two, <laughs> just to get through it, but yeah. doesn't happen very There's often. a one really rough patch on the way home where we slept, we took turns to sleep here fully dressed. Didn't this we? is true. Ready to sort of shoot up and... Yeah, but in four years I think that's the only that's time. That's the only time I think, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, straight into your gym jams and tuck down under the duvet and go to sleep for four hours. Yeah. We cook, we eat seriously, don't we, on board? We don't, the, none of this Mars bars and, you know, things. We eat proper meals, don't we? Meat and two veg. Yeah. We always keep a couple of very simple one-pot dishes that you can just dash down, throw it into the microwave and dash upstairs again. And, uh, and then dash down and serve it and eat it in the cockpit. But, that's... that's nice to go back to warm times. weather, though. Yes. Love sailing in warm weather. Cruising in the British Isles is just not the same, is it? I mean, we, we cruise We're getting a bit old for that. Cornwall, we've got a you know cruising place, but it's cold and it rains lots. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the Caribbean and the, well, even in Maine, it was gorgeous weather. When we were well, we were there in midsummer. We were. There. I put the water maker pretty high on the list, so yeah. you're not dependent on picking up water. Yes, that can be you can spend a, a long, doubtful. long time at anchor. Yeah. Yes, without. So when you've got a water maker, water. you're completely independent of yeah. the water supply, and that yeah. can make a lot of difference. Yes. Um, Especially to cleanliness on board. <laughs> <laughs> Frequent yes, challenge. really good water maker. Yeah. 
is, is pretty high on the list for, for blue water cruising, I think. Yes, um, the Bimini. As big a boat as you feel you can handle, because it's just so much more comfortable. Comfortable cockpit cushions, table at the right height. <laughs> it's just got to be comfortable, because you're living on board. And it's not just, a, you know, get on board, go somewhere and get off. No, it's a floating cottage. It's a, it's a second home, so it has to be comfortable. Hence cushions and teddies and bookshelves everywhere. And, well, the teddies aren't for us and for the grandchildren. <laughs> well, a freezer is um, brilliant. Yeah, that's pretty hard on the list, isn't it? But you yeah. have to have a generator, obviously, to keep, keep it going. Keep your batteries topped up and so on. And we uh, we get the local butcher to vacuum pack and freeze, you know, meat in sort of portions, so we just get one out. And you have to be organised with your storage. I keep a, a notebook of where everything is and I tick things off as they've been used. It's such a lovely lifestyle, isn't it? I can't wait to go. <laughs> Yes, work's been getting in the way for the last couple of years, but yes, we'll be getting back to it. Coming to an end.